I've sometimes been claimed to be disparaging about philosophy and various things I've written. And I've pointed out that, that in physics, and I'll get letters for this, but in physics, philosophy is largely irrelevant. It isn't irrelevant in brain science because here's an area where the questions, where, thing, where science is well formulated with empirical evidence and, and conclusions, the, it's sort of gone, if you wish, beyond philosophy. Right. But, but when you don't know what the questions are right. and, and things are still very fluid, there's this interconnection between philosophers and, and scientists that's clear that you clearly mentioned because you say philosopher X and scientists right. were thinking about these things. But I was intrigued when I thought about higher order theory, quote unquote, and then I look back at early parts of the book or, early, or earlier things I know about at William James or Helmholtz, who were really talking out of their various body parts. I mean, they were just right. they were just speculating, right. and there was intelligent, logical speculation that those speculations, in some sense, are, are so similar to higher order theory. And I just wonder: is calling higher order theory giving it a kind of yeah. scientific? Uh, it's premature that it, it maybe isn't that different than with. I'm just being a devil's advocate here, but I want yeah, to hear what you high have to. order. I, I'm not. I don't like the term, mm -hmm. um, but it it's uh, it came out of philosophy, and it's based on this assumption that you have a high order and a, a first order state, and yeah. that that's all that's important. Yeah. So I think it's not it's not a great terminology, but I think the message is important because the higher order representation is not itself conscious. In order to be conscious of of what's in that representation, you need another representation of yeah, it. Yeah, oh, sure. But I guess what I'm trying to say, I didn't say it very well, is what they argued was plausible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I'm reading from you is plausible. Right. Is it anything yet more than plausible? It's 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 more than what William James had because there was no data to go with. Yeah. It. But there's a lot of data that's coming up with imaging and you know being it's correlational, of course. But you can uh, there are new techniques, for example, TMS that you can uh, use to functionally inactivate uh, you know small areas of the brain and perhaps get some causal uh, significance. Uh, but we go back to the difference between physics and and psychology again. Um, you know, the, I think there's no way, folks, that physics has relevance for for physics, except as a, kind of a starting point for doing uh, your work. But in psychology, um, I think it, we've been too easy to dis, too quick to dismiss folk psychology, because we live our lives in folk psychological space. Sure. And so I, I agree that folk psychology has nothing to do with what the amygdala is doing and other parts of, you know, more automatic parts of the brain. But in terms of consciousness, folk psychology is what it's all about. And so I think we need to un come to the understanding that when we talk about fear, it, that word has meaning. And so when some of my colleagues want fear to stay in the amygdala because, you know, that is a useful way of thinking about disease, I don't think it is, but that they do, uh, that we have this kind of fear generator and so forth. Um, I think that's wrong because it gives you the feeling, the impression that the amygdala is the fear center because that's what that word means. Yeah, and it, so and, and it has real implications so for 